Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of SpinCast. Today, we're jumping back into the world of high school esports. Joining us is Chase Chatfield. He is the head esports coach at Van Cleve High School. So without further ado, Chase, go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell us where your passions in esports and gaming started and how that took you down your path to becoming the head esports coach at Van Cleve. Well, first, thank you for everybody for tuning in and watching SpinCast. Um, my name is Chase Chatfield. I am the head e esports coach at Van Cleve High School in Van Cleve, Mississippi. Um, I consider myself an OG gamer. I started back in Commodore 64 era with Intellivision, uh, holding quarters on the arcade. Um, when I was in college, my goal was to spend my weight in quarters. I didn't have that much money, come to find out, but you know, I, I spent a lot of money, a lot of time in arcades. I still do it now. Um, I Esports and gamers, in my opinion, are the most underrepresented group of students at school. And the beauty of esports is that it covers the widest variety of people from, you know, the typical or the stereotype of geek or nerd that we use, or all the way up to our secretaries playing uh, Candy Crush. You know, everybody is covered in, in the gambit. And uh, my biggest goal when starting this esports program was to get the students involved and let them really be the workhorses while I support them as much as I can and to give them the opportunity to walk their halls with uh, some pride and earn those letterman jackets and to hear their name and their sport announced over the intercoms in the morning and to really let the other adults in the room know that it's not just video games it's an entire ecosystem from literacy to history to mathematics to coding to you know your your skill and your content creators you know it's you don't have to be the guy on the screen or the girl on the screen uh, running the show you could be behind the screen making sure everybody looks good and if i can get that message across then i've, I've done my job yeah absolutely i think that's that's one of the greatest things about esports if not the greatest it's just the multitude of opportunities and avenues and pathways that students can take right you don't have to be the best of the best of the best to play in esports like i said you can be behind the screens you can be the face right you can be the caster you can be part of the production team and also the people that design the game right someone makes valorant league of legends rocket league and so many more games so there's absolutely. so many different ways to be involved so i love to see it um, but i'm what i'm interested in is tell me a little bit more about your program um, at Van Cleve. Tell me like, you know, what teams do you have? What competitions do you compete in? Um, what games do you participate in? Just give me a snapshot of what everything looks like. Gotcha. So um, at our school, we are in the infancy stages. Uh, we started our esports program after two years of fighting for it. We finally started it in January of this year. And then the pandemic hit. And so after three weeks of competition, um, we had a top 10 ranked team. Uh, we've got two players that are top five, top seven in the state at the end of last season. And we were hoping and praying that we were able to do it again this go round. Um, the games that uh, we have on the varsity level um, are League of Legends and Rocket League. Uh, we also have the rec side of both of those teams. Um, the platform that we perform uh, with and does all the heavy lifting, we just have to do the coaching and the playing. Um, they also uh, have uh, Smite, Fortnite, and Overwatch in the Rec League area. And uh, we're slowly filling those teams up as people realize that they can represent their school from behind the screen and uh, show what they can do. The uh, other games that we have with our gaming club, we bring in, you know, Magic the Gathering, some uh, Axis and Allies. We've got guys that play chess. Every once in a while, we do just a, an in-house um smash brothers tournament just for flexing rights you know mm -hmm. and it's not it's not just about the varsity it's not just about finding a college scholarship college scholarship you know it's uh, some for some people it's like i just want to play and chill this is my outlet and um i want to provide that opportunity for them too and if they decide they want to compete then that's awesome that means i've provided an educational and safe environment for them to feel like they can mess up in without being flamed and griefed by by their peers, which is one of the other big part of our program is working on, you know, the the mental aspect of uh, handling those folks out there that that's what they do. They're not there for gaming. They're there for for griefing. Yeah, unfortunately, there is 
that that is very prevalent in esports, right? By no means the majority, I think, but you know, it's always the negative that stands out, right? Whenever something bad happens, it looks and you hear it a hundred more times than when something good happens, right? And that's just kind of the unfortunate part of esports. But you know, addressing it at an earlier age, I think, is one of those really important steps to like making sure that over time that starts to be eradicated, right? Because so much before is like when you play football and you start, you know, bad mouthing someone, like your coach is going to chew you out, you know. But in esports, you're before this right before all these programs started to pop up you know it's kind of just the wild west right you can say whatever you want online and no one's going <laughs> to yeah. do anything right um uh, the worst that they can do is either say it back or they just leave or you leave right um but there you know there's it's that online kind of medium kind of allowed for that because it was so you know uncontrolled unpoliced so to say um uh, yeah but, and you know i i cut my teeth in the cod days you know black mm -hmm. ops one black ops two you know and that was almost as important part of the game as it was, you know, being a slayer or holding mm -hmm. down objectives or whatever it is. And, you know, now that it's become more prevalent and far more mainstream and the, the age group of people that are performing well and winning championships is, you know, much lower than people really, really believe because they just see the content creators, you know, in their twenties and thirties, but we got high schoolers out there and we got sophomores, you know, winning world cups, you know, and how do you, how do you help those guys? And, you know, teachers and educators do a wonderful job at teaching students how to be great digital citizens. But um, I don't think that we do an uh, inclusive job on teaching them how to handle the bad digital citizens. And mm -hmm. esports really does do that because it's real time and having a coach there next to you, showing you ways to, to handle it, having mental health practices, where we talk about things that happen in the game, we go back and we look at chat, you know, and like you said, the accountability factor is, you know, it's almost been accepted that if you're not flaming or griefing somebody, you're not doing it right. You know, you've got that two minutes at the end of the game to just hammer whatever you can. But what happens if you just say, you know, GG, well played, or you call out the guy that hammered you the entire game was like, dude, you're awesome. You know, mm -hmm. good game. Hope I don't run into you again, but you know, good luck on the next one. And just catch people off guard with, you know, kindness and, you know, dare I say love of playing your video game, yep. you know, and, and helping them learn the difference between, you know, the being upset and passionate about the game and the, the rage aspect that, you know, gamers tend to get a bad rap for. You know, we, we don't have an outlet like traditional sports where we can hit something or throw something or run or anything. We sit and if we smack something, it breaks and we can't play anymore. So, you yep. know, just helping, helping the youth work through some of the struggles they have uh, mentally when they don't have that physical outlet in the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that brings up a really important point to me. It's like, how do you overcome that adversity, right? Like that you were talking about is whether it's toxicity or just losing a match or having a difficult day, you know, what outlets can you go explore? And I think esports really provides that, right? Maybe not in that competitive sense, but like go play one of the casual games, right? Kind of growing up, like I used to play Rainbow Six Siege competitively, but I'd play Call of Duty for fun, right? And I'd weigh the two differently. So I think, you know, looking for those platforms to like, be like, okay, I need to calm down, I need to relax. And also having the coaches and the educators and the teachers around you to be like, hey, let's take a deep breath. Let's take a step back, relax. You know, let's look at our mental health and make sure that we're in the right place. And then let's go to the next round, right? Um, and having that, you know, at a younger age really sets those kind of like that basis for growth as they continue to get better and better and, you know, pursue the next championship or pursue the next stage. So absolutely agree there. Um, kind of going to my next question is, you know, take me through a day of what your program looks like. You know, I think you're, you have a lot of interesting different points that you look at in the mental health and the competition and the more casual side for the ones that just want to have fun. So take me through what a day um, of your program looks like and what you try to focus on to really make sure that your students are set up for success in whichever pathway or avenue that they're currently pursuing. Right. Well, um, currently we have a practice schedule of three days a week um, with a 60 40 focus gaming not gaming um, that i'm hoping to get to 70 30 of uh not gaming and gaming um and you know the first day is about scouting and not necessarily hey what role do you like the best you know but where can you help the team out the most you know we're so used to solo queuing that we just do our own game and hope everyone else plays around us but you know teaching them to work together and taking their skills. I mean, your, your second best champion for League of Legends 
may be the best champion for this matchup, you know, and just kind of dis discussing different uh, avenues or how we're going to approach particular um, uh, competition and uh, match from another school um, options there and just kind of figuring out, you know, what, what it is that's best for us to become victorious without all five people on the rift, you know, being the, the carry. And mm -hmm. um, that's, that's one day. And then we will, you know, hop into a custom and practice some of those uh, champions uh, synergies and get them, you know, working together um, in the best they can and creating, you know, different combinations based on what they, they prefer and, you know, expanding past your main role, you know, because we don't always stay in the role we are in, but we may find that we're better suited for something else, but we've never had the chance to do it. Um, and so that's really what Mondays for us is about. Tuesdays is competition day. You come in, it's about game day. It's about me making sure that they are treated as much like royalty as I can, you know, announcements on the, um, over the intercom, uh, their room is set up, turned on. They just got to log in and do their thing. Uh, snacks and stuff are, are, are there for them in between matches, talking them up and just kind of, you know, being there for them. And then Wednesdays um, is our recovery day where we don't game at all on the computer. We have a, a, an eye rest. We, I pull up uh, film and do screenshots and talk about different uh, events. And then all of our varsity teams will get together on Fridays and have a, uh, a wellness day where we will mix up some weight room training, um, some uh, strength training and uh, stretching because we sit a lot and, um, you know, they're young and they're flexible, but you do that long, long enough when you're my age, <laughs> that stretch at the end of a 10 minute round is brutal sometimes. So, yeah. you know, seeing the, Hey, not necessarily, Hey, don't, don't turn out like me. <laughs> you know, but, you know, there's some thing, preventative things that we can do. Um, I've got a lot of uh, goals and aspirations uh, that I would like to have our program move into, but I also don't want to do too much too soon. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, collaborating uh, with other high schools and college programs and just seeing what they do, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked, you know, and just making those connections and showing them, you know, on the regular basis, like, hey, this is where you can go. You know, you're a math person, engineering. Hey, you know, we got Mississippi State and almost the entire engineering program seems like it plays league, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so that may be a good spot for you if we want to start looking into it and start sending some stats and recruiting that way. And now they're paying for an education with their pastime. And yeah. why not? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that next step is so important. And that is something that I think is really lacks kind of in the industry as a whole, right? Is what's that, what does that next step look like? So many people are focused on going pro, but like at the same time, the chance of going pro is incredibly small, right? Even more so in esports than traditional sports because there's not as many spots, right? An NFL roster has 55 players. A Rocket League team has three, right? League of Legends yeah. has five. You know, that, that math just doesn't add up very fast for anybody's favor, right? Um, so focusing on, you said, like, what does college look like? What does playing at the next level look like? What is taking my passions and applying them um, constructively in a setting that I can have that success long-term and, you know, have a job and make a living off of it. Right. Which is really important, which kind of leads to my next question is to you, you know, whether you do it now or that's one of your visions in the future is what does that recruiting process kind of look like? You know, do you have a, a set vision of how you want to help these um, help your students um, go from, you know, playing in high school, having all these passions and then being, being, uh, being able to take them to the next level at college? Well, a, a guy that I really, really look up to, um, one of the things that he said was tell your own story or somebody else will. Yep. And a lot of times, you know, gamers sit around on Twitch and they play their favorite game, you know, or they're on YouTube or on Facebook gaming or whatever medium is, is out there at the time. And there's, like you said, there's, tons of people out there and you are always at zero viewers. How are you going to get viewed? You know? And so you have to really tell your own story. And so reach is creating something that shows off who you are, what your range is, not just your best stuff, you know, cause everybody has their best stuff, but showing off your range of what you're capable of doing in every role on different games and just showing versatility and letting and 
forcing them to have those conversations, not only with you, but with themselves, you know, in, in reflection. You know, reaching out to schools and, and as a coach, following through with that, it's like, well, where are you wanting to go to school? What are you wanting to do? And then making some of those steps, because we have to remember, I cannot put adult behaviors and force it onto my students because they're still kids. You know, no matter how big and strong and manly or, you know, womanly they walk around, they're still little boys, they're still little girls with insecurities. And it's my job to help them through those things. And if taking off one pressure of reaching out to somebody and me taking the rejection from that group versus them getting hit with it, then, then that's what I'm going to do because that's what I'm supposed to do as their, as their teacher and as their coach. You know, um, having them reach out as well and encouraging them to, to do that and putting them into contact and, you know, uh, opening the door and uh, allowing them the opportunity to walk through it however they choose and whenever they choose, but also encourage them to know that you're still, you know, it, it's about you. It's not about me. I can talk you up all day long, but you know, you have to tell your story and you have to get yourself where you want to be. Others are here to help, but it's ultimately up to you to make that walk down the hall. Yep, exactly. I think you, you said it best, right? It's about opening the door, right? Giving them the platform, giving them the ability to walk through the door, but at the same time, they have to take those steps, right? But, you know, yeah. as the coach, as the educator, it's kind of our job to make sure that that door is open for them. Um, and that's super important. And I'm super Absolutely. happy to see you do that. It's helping them, it's helping them create their own ownership yep. um, and being engaged um, in their, their own career path. And uh, if we do everything for them, when they get there, it's not appreciated and you know, it will sometimes go to waste, but mm -hmm. when they put the work into it and they see others are there to support them, again, back to just being in high school, the fear of failure is gone and they're willing to take those risks knowing that those, that there are people behind them to support them versus, you know, hey, go over there, do that and tell me what happened. You yep. know, and we just can't approach it that way. Yep, absolutely. I totally agree with you there. And those are some really interesting points that I really hope to see kind of continue to expand at all these different programs that I see. Um, and even in the new ones, right? Because I think I was kind of say high school esports is a bunch of little micro clusters, right? There's a lot of great programs like yours sprinkled all over the America, right? But it's not mm -hmm. mainstream yet. It's not like football or basketball where every single school has a fully fledged out program and a student section and a community behind them. It'll be there one day. And it's just how do we take those steps to get there as quickly as possible, but also not getting there too quickly. Um, Cause that, you know, getting anywhere too fast is never a good thing. Usually, you know, some, most of the time you get a speeding ticket, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. which, you know, whatever that looks like in this sense, um, no one wants a speeding ticket. So, um, but we are running out of time here. I know, I know you have to get um, to coach your team as they come uh, right. compete here soon. So I'll leave you with one last short question is kind of in your experience, looking at high school esports as an industry, um, what is that one step that we need to take to get to the next level as quickly as we can? Um, obviously, you know, not too fast, but what's that one thing that you hope to see change or be improved on? So more students can have platforms like yours to really expand their abilities and take them to the next level. Well, I think, the biggest thing is that when we talk about esports to administrators and we talk about it to uh, superintendents and parents, that we do not talk um, down to them as if, why don't you already know this? Yep. And we have to understand that they don't yep. understand it. They just, they see it for what it is. It's a video game and it's our job to educate everybody, you know, and we also don't need to defend it, mm -hmm. you know, through putting down another sport. Um, you know, we are not a traditional sport. We're not going to be treated as one now, but we do need to show that we have a place in traditional sports and that's going to take time. And you do that through educating, you do that through uh, providing good examples and just slowly building your program and building the relationships uh, at the school with the people that make decisions and know that you are there, you know, for the students and that you're there to stay. And it's not just a fun pastime. Yep, absolutely. You know, I think like you said, as long as we're showing them the positive, constructive applications of all the skills you're learning, it'll, the, the sky's the limit, right? So absolutely. absolutely. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time. Chase, thanks for sitting down with me today and talking about high school esports. Real quick, plug yourself, plug your program. Tell me, is there a Twitter out there? Is there an Instagram out there that we can follow you guys on to see your continued growth and success? Um, right now, we have a Twitter um, at Van Cleve Esports 2. Uh, the number two, not T-O-O. -O. Um, myself is at Master Blaster. That's M-A-T-H-T-E-R Blaster. 
and um, I post a lot of stuff that my guys are doing and share and uh, look to connect with anybody that's hitting up scrims, wants to try to start a program but not know where to start, you know, I'll sit down and talk with you, DM you, Zoom you, whatever you need to do uh, to help you uh, reach a group of kids that uh, deserve it. Yep, absolutely. I think that's the best thing about esports to me is that all the people involved that want to see it grow are so happy, right? There's no trade secrets. There's no like, no, I'm not going to tell you how I do it. It's right. It's just how do we help the students, you know, be able to grow as individuals and as teams to that next level? Absolutely love to see it. To all our viewers and listeners, thanks for staying the entire time. Stay healthy, stay happy. Pandemic's still going on. Be careful. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of yourself. And ultimately, stay plugged in.